So this is Christmas. A light shining in the darkness that John tells us in chapter one, that in him all the life of all mankind, that light shining in the darkness, and that darkness has not overcome that light. For in that life is the life for all, wrapped up in human flesh, swaddled in a manger. I wonder if you can see it in your mind's eye this morning. There he is, the baby Jesus, resting under the midnight canopy of heaven's thunderous praise. I wonder if you can hear the sound of the angels when they rejoiced. Or the shepherds when they heard the news and marveled. For in this city of David today, a Savior born, Christ the Lord. So this is Christmas. While the kings of the earth raged and the empires and emperors shook their fists, heavenly son, Jesus, the champion of the father, lay asleep in a little town called Bethlehem. Oh, you little town of Bethlehem, too little to be counted among the great clans of Judah, but from you, a savior to rule over all Israel. His goings were once prophesied from long, long ago in the mouth of the ancient of days, the one who rides upon the clouds. So this is Christmas. A baby born, a son is given, and upon his shoulders the government rests, established in justice, upheld with his righteousness, of which his kingdom The prophet Isaiah tells us in chapter nine, there shall be no end. His name, you ask. Wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, the prince of peace, like we were singing about this morning. You know him as Jesus, Yeshua, our Emmanuel, God with us. So this is Christmas. The Messiah has come. Have you met him? Do you know him? Hope that was once promised is here, fulfilled at long last. As the song says, joy to the world. Joy to the world. The Savior reigns. Let heaven and nature sing. Let the earth receive her king. And let every heart including yours and mine, prepare him room. Repeat the sounding joy. In the midst of a world without joy, without hope, without promise, without purpose, struggling through the chaos and the confusion, repeat the sounding joy. That sounding joy coming forth in Jesus the Christ, the man from Nazareth, the Messiah has come. So this is Christmas? You mean it's not the screeching sound of tires on concrete pavements, whistling busy travelers from store to store? You mean it's it's not the sound of cash registers ringing as the greedy cry out for more? You mean it's not the presents under the tree or the sweets that we eat? It's not the lights or the spectacle or the fights that we get into with those who've had far too much alcohol? No, this is Christmas the real gift of Christmas, not found in any of these material things, but rather in the presence of the Father's one and only begotten Son, the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world. Do you see what I see? And can you hear what I hear? For at the sound of his voice, the oceans roar and the mountains shake, the demons they tremble, and the graves still to this day give up their dead. At the sound of his voice, those who mourn are comforted, those who hunger and thirst are filled, and those that suffer for his namesake are those that are now inheritors and recipients of unspeakable joy. At the sound of his voice, I believe skeptics still become believers and slaves become sons. Prodigals are met with a party and the rejected are welcomed home. At the sound of his voice, the lost become the found, the hurting become the healed, the cowardly become the courageous, come on somebody, and the bound become the free. I wonder, have you heard this voice? Do you hear what I hear? Have you given yourself permission 
this Christmas season. I wonder, to slip away from all the noise, from all the hustle and bustle of your daily routine and schedule and life and parties and presents and wrapping and things, to hear the sound of a Savior crying out, saying to people like yourself and me, come unto me, those of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You see, the promise of Christmas, the presence of Christmas, no, not the P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S, but the P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, try to say that three times fast, is that we would have good news in us. Jesus, the Christ, the hope of glory in us. And with him, the promise of rest. Come to me, he says, and I will give you rest. That's a promise. Anybody tired today? Anybody worn out from striving and trying and manipulating, coercing and trying to manage your life or manage your sin? And you've come to a place where you say, I can't do it. Can I tell you something? Good. You're right where the Lord wants you today. In the tension of receiving the gifts that he wants to give you, chief among them rest, as we see here in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. But I wonder, have you heard his voice lately? How about in the, the middle of the night when it's just you all alone, or you and your spouse, or you with your friends? Have you heard his voice crying out to you in that still, small voice, that whispering voice, saying, my peace I give to you? Not as the world gives. You see, the world has a peace that doesn't last. It says, buy this, do this, become this, and you'll have peace. How many have tried that and failed? How many have tried that and found that to be a fool's errand? How many have tried that and discovered that that is emptiness? But he says, I give you peace, not as the world gives. So do not let your heart be troubled. If you're here today and you have a troubled heart, I believe that his gift to you is peace, his gift to you is rest, his gift to you is life itself. In him, the life of all mankind. The light of the world. Have you seen this light? Have you heard his voice? Have you put your hope and your faith in him? Friends, here we are today in this place celebrating all that Jesus has done by coming into our bruised and very broken world. And as Jonathan attested to, he came into it to redeem it so that you and I could find ourselves, our hopes, our dreams, our humanity, reconstructed and reawakened and reimagined in light of this coming, in light of this Christmas day. But I wonder, have we taken time to hear his voice, to know it? to listen for it, because I believe one word from God has the power to change everything. Just like it did with those shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flocks by night, one word from God changed everything for them. Just like it did for Mary, young Mary, oh, sweet young Mary, when the angel came to her and told her that she would conceive and give birth to a son through the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon her life and overshadowing her, one word from God changed everything for her just like it did for Joseph when he was warned in that dream to take his family and to flee to Egypt for their safety. One word from God had the power to change everything for them, and I believe that it has the power to change everything for us today. And you see, that has always been the desire of God, that through one word, the Logos, the word of God made flesh, Jesus Christ himself, your life and my life would be forever changed. It's always been his desire to change everything about our lives. And he came into our world then and he comes to each and every one of us still today. He comes knocking upon the door of our hearts today to dwell richly within them by faith. The Bible tells us it's always been his desire to live in us. Not in temples or in buildings made with human hands as beautiful and as great as these are but to live in human hearts like yours and mine. Hearts that have had to wrestle through fear. Hearts that have had to wrestle through doubt. Hearts that have had to wrestle through heartbreak. Hopelessness, grief, pain, suffering. Yeah, Jesus is in all of that too. He strips off his, his divinity and he comes down in the form of a, of a lowly servant king, a suffering servant king, not to rule and reign and lord over, but to serve 
to wash feet, to give up his life, to be beaten, scourged, and ultimately crucified. But then to be raised to life from the grave so that you and I could have this same life living in us. You see, the real story of Christmas is not just that he came, but that he wants to come and fill our lives with who he is. Paul says, it's Christ, the hope of glory in me. It's Christ that changes everything. It's Christ, that one word from God that has the power to change your life and mine. And today he wants to come to us to dwell richly within our hearts through faith. Faith is what I call radical trust. It's learning to put your heart in his hands and say, God, your will be done. That's what he's looking for in the earth today. Men and women that would follow him and serve him and love him by faith. The Bible says that we walk not by sight, but by faith. So have you put your faith in him today? Have you seen this light? Have you heard his voice? That's what God wants for us. And that's the invitation for all that come to him today. That Jesus' miraculous birth would not just be a story that we sing about and celebrate once a year. Come on, somebody. But a living miracle in us each and every day. That's the invitation that Christ puts before us as those who have put their faith and trust in him. So let me ask you a really, really important question. Have you done that today? Have you done that at all? Do you know this Jesus? Have you seen his light? Have you heard his voice? Have you put your faith in him? In other words, have you surrendered everything to Christ? It's the most important decision that you will ever make, not just because of what is in store for you in eternity, but for the life he wants you to live right now here on this earth. Not a life full of meaninglessness, emptiness, chasing the wind, all those things that Solomon calls vanity, all the presents and things and all the wrapping paper that will end up in the trash, all the gifts that fade and do not last. No, the power of God in the person of Jesus expressed through his Holy Spirit living in you. That happens the moment you say, Jesus, come, come and fill me. Come be the Lord and the Savior of my life. Come take over the reins. And I want to give you that opportunity even now, even for those of you that are watching this or listening to this message online, I want to give you that opportunity to make that decision. Because this is the beginning of a journey for you that perhaps may shape generations to come, legacies and trajectories of your family to come. And it's a simple decision and it's a simple prayer and we can pray it together even as a church. Can we do that? And it's something that we like to pray a lot here at Courageous Church. And it goes like this, Jesus, Savior, Savior of the world, come and save me from myself. I believe and confess that you are the son of God, the light in which all the life of mankind rests. I believe that you came as the word made flesh and you dwelt among us. And now you have come to us with the invitation to experience peace and rest for our souls, to not allow our hearts to be troubled any longer, but to be full of your spirit. Come fill us with Holy Spirit. Come fill us with your life. We believe and confess that you are who you said you were that you are the Son of God, that you are Emmanuel, that you are Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Come be Prince of Peace. Come rule over me. Jesus, we ask for you. Come fill us with your Spirit. Give us a life of freedom and hope, and we will serve you, love you, and follow you all the days of our life. In Jesus' mighty name, and all God's people say amen. And amen.